what a beautiful day. The sun is shining, cats are roaming about, the birds are chirping. This is the perfect day to stay inside and watch a bunch of Nostalgia Critic. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Two things in particular, to boldly flee, which is an internet video he calls a film, and also a trivia show that he crowdfunded. I'm Doug Walker. You might know me as star, editor, writer, and director of such shows as The Nostalgia Critic. When I was younger, I did watch Nostalgia Critic and Bomb Reviews and uh, Ask, so it was called something like that, and he's in a robe. That material probably had an impact on me as a young man and shaped the person I grew up to be. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Heads up, America. So Doug Walker made to boldly flee. He announced the end of the Nostalgia Critic and he raised money to make this. And while there's many shows we're currently working on right now, one of them could use your help. And by help, I need money. For his new show, he needed $50,000. That was his goal. He got $89,757. For $10, you get a thank you. For $25, you get an autographed photo. $200, you get a voicemail greeting. Doug will record a voicemail greeting. A Skype call with Doug and Rob for $500. Holy sh- Screen your show. Doug and Rob will screen your video series and give you some tips and pointers through a Skype call for $750. For $1,500, you get a tour of the studio and take home a copy of every DVD CD in the store thus far. Watch Doug film an episode of The Nostalgia Critic and take home a copy of every DVD CD we have lunch with Doug and Rob. Take home a copy of every DVD CD we have sold in the store. For $6,500, appear as a character in Nostalgia Critic. Plus, you'll get a copy of every DVD CD we have sold in the store thus far. We have stretch goals, which you can see below. All of them dedicated to getting you even more shows. One of the next ones being a video game game show. Lies. Lies. These are all lies. Video game game show. It probably won't be called that. He's just talking out of his ass. It's not quite finished yet. We've been working hard to collect costumes, props, and all sorts of goodies to make more productions. He's so vague about everything, he keeps saying... We're gonna use the money to make productions. And once we put that money to good use, we'll continue to bring you productions and shows your way. Most important of all, once we get the money and the equipment to get the productions we need going, we're gonna open up this place to other productions. Their productions, whether it be online or I don't give a shit what else. According to the Channel Awesome website, with the $89,000 they received, they used $47,767.67 for productions. The leftover money is being used to continue filming Pop Quiz Hot Shop. He says Brad Jones, who plays Cinema Snob, is going to host the show. The answer is no. No idea. That would be Grenada. Oh. You said Grenada, oh. it would have so been wrong. <laughs> That's why we got Funny Man and Nostalgia Expert Brad Jones to host the show. My name is synonymous with nostalgia, but one thing has eluded me. The game show. Then there's Miss Stockholm. She has apparently been kidnapped by Brad. And she's locked in the basement with pink fuzzy handcuffs that they got at a sex store. All of this is totally unnecessary. Heads up, universe. It's like the bare minimum of what he needed to do. That's actually correct. <laughs> I've never seen a host look so bored to be there. Hey, Brad, why don't you look up? Based on Madame Butterfly, what 1990s musical staple featured a helicopter landing on stage? Hint, it's set in Vietnam. It's between this She's and O Platoon. <laughs> between this and O Platoon, the musical. That would be Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon. And the score is Max 30, John 230. <gasps> Looks like I'm gonna have a new friend in the dungeon. Idiot. He's, do he's doing it just like in the movie. He's retracing his steps. All right. <laughs> the music is mixed too loud. You cannot hear what he's saying. You can help him out. 
Torture Dungeon. This pilot episode is also 10 minutes longer than the normal episodes of Pop Quiz Hot Shot. Are you ready to face off against the final boss, the nostalgia uh, critic? Okay, I think that's all I need to see. If Love is an open door. Life can be so much more. Mulan, frozen. <laughs> he has to point his microphone at them. That's ancient history. Been there, done. Mulan. No, Hercules. $90,000, and he has to point the microphone at the guest as they say the answer. Doug clearly loves Disney, and he keeps asking himself questions about it. So the category is Disney love songs. I'm going to read you a lyric. I know what's really going on. Here, the 80s and 90s rule. When the show actually aired, it was Doug hosting. But you're my friends now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes you are, and that just makes me so happy, because this is what friends do. Please, please stand up. You have a gun pointing at you, yes, not very wise. To boldly flee was interesting in a certain way, but I find this interesting because he put everything on the line for this. He ended his most popular show to make this. It's a trivia show that doesn't make any sense. I'm the nostalgia critic, and ever since I was a child, I always wanted to play games, quoting movies and TV with my friends. They present it like the character of nostalgia critic is a crazy person who kidnaps all these people and makes them contestants in this weird game show. Now that I have power, I can take my friends by force. There will be laughs, trivia, those disturbing cartoons that give you night terrors. But it makes the character of Nostalgia Critic so unlikable and weird. I, I don't understand why they did it, and why it's even necessary, because really, it's just a bland game show. All of this extra stuff he adds on top of it doesn't add anything to it. Oh my god, Joseph, what are you doing? Martha, I swear, it's not what you think. Oh, rat in hell, you little man whore! It starts with some kind of game. Go! Get the bat nipples off of Batman! They're out of focus. And then they just do a bunch of questions that make no sense. Which Tim Burton film featured the lyric, just because I cannot see it doesn't mean I can't believe it? Nightmare Before Christmas. Henry Selleck directed the movie. The way he asked the question wasn't clear at all. It wasn't specific enough. Then there's a guy, General Adesetic, get it? And he just stands there with a gun, threatening to kill the contestants who lose. Taryn, Taryn, Taryn. That is going to be there if you do that again. Good? Good. That was really necessary. I'm glad you put tons of money into having a guy just stand there and contribute absolutely nothing to the show. Critic, go ninja, go ninja, go. Ninja Turtles 2. Incorrect! Doug's intention was to make this a trivia show, but it was also funny. What separates this from other game shows? Well, we want to make this one funny. This isn't funny. Good for you. You want a cookie? <laughs> what a dick. It has a dark sense of humor. The point of a game show is that everything is very friendly and it's like comfort food. You can go on any one of those shows and the host comes out and he's like a very friendly, respectable guy. Hi there, my name is Mr. Whatever and welcome to Family Trivia Night. It's clever, but it wasn't funny. <sighs> Expect more out of you, Tom. No, that's pretty much my life. Yeah, wow. And you're sad and you're bringing me in a bad mood. Oh, but it's a joke. Shut up. It's a joke. He's not really mad. I don't know. He looks pretty pissed to me. Yeah. I have okay. a lot of rope in my car, but that has nothing to do with guns. Of course not. God, I am so glad I got to you before you got to me. <laughs> and he made the same joke again. Oh, you grew up in the car. I'm glad I got to you before you got to me. He made the joke already. I haven't taken your eyes. Yes. In which Monty Python film did John Cleese shout, I say you're the Messiah, Lord, and I should know I follow a few? <laughs> suck. Coming and I'm still in therapy. <laughs> I am so shocked you didn't kidnap me. You made that joke already. Somewhere this got switched around because you should clearly be kidnapping me. I've never heard a Popeye fan more dedicated and scary, but good for you, man. Nicely done. <laughs> nicely done. No problem. You know, I'm glad I kidnapped you too because clearly you would be kidnapping other people with stories like this. Finish this Kevin Spacey line. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was... You're tearing me apart, devil! <laughs> good guess. And you know what? Let me give it to him because that movie would have been so much better if they had that line. Give him that <laughs> What? That didn't make you laugh. 
laugh. If the contestant does not know the answer, but can make the nostalgia critic laugh, 10 points are still given. Hey, you know, that movie should have had that line. What Steven Spielberg movie had the line, we seem to have reached the age where life stops giving us things and starts taking them away? Batman Begins. <laughs> the classic Steven Spielberg movie. You know what? Yeah, give him the point for that. <laughs> That wasn't funny, that wasn't a good answer, but who cares? Just who cares? Give him 10 points. It was a totally different movie with that line. No, actually it was as good as it gets. You make me want to scream. Again, a very different movie if you would have said that. You made that same joke two times already. Yes, and uh, my last name is Beverage, and no one ever, it's spelled differently, <laughs> but no one ever believes that. How and... do you spell beverage differently? <laughs> Silent Q. How do you spell beverage differently? In what action film does Steve Buscemi say, define irony, a bunch of idiots dancing on a plane to a song made famous by a band that died in a plane crash? The Wizard of Oz? The movie would have been a lot better if he was in it, but no, that was actually Con Air, the prequel to Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it would be a totally different movie with a... Yeah, it would be. In American Beauty, which actor said, Look at me, jerking off in the shower. Look at me, jerking off in the shower. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You have to dress up and talk like Popeye for round two. Name the Star Wars character who said, It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. Obi-Wan Kenobi? No, it's actually Admiral Piet. Yeah, I didn't know that one. He just picked an obscure character so he could make fun of the name instead of writing a question that was good. And I just like the fact that somebody decided, hey, you know what this character's name should be? Piet. Let's go over this together, okay. Dude, stay at the microphone and ask the questions. What British actor said life is pain, princess? Carrie Owen? Nicely done, <laughs> nicely done. <laughs> Oh, let me give you a hug. That's just amazing. I love that film. Yeah, let me give you a hug. Bill, I love that film. I think they should make Walt Disney's Fatal Attraction. Here's 10 points. You know what? I'm giving you 10 points for that simply because I think we should make Walt Disney's Fatal Attraction. In the final round, the winner has to face off with Nostalgia Critic. Tom, if you win, you'll be able to get this. A new car model that you can build yourself, as well as $100 in cash. $100? $100 is not worth this amount of public humiliation. <laughs> Spaceballs. Close. It's actually Spaceballs, not heh, Spaceballs, but I'll give you the points anyway. <laughs> The Three Amigos. Close. It's The Three Amigos, not <laughs> The Three Amigos. Today's theme is Star Wars quotes. In my experience, there is no such thing as luck. Han Solo. Incorrect. It's a trap. Fish guy. Uh, General Akbar. How do you not know Admiral Akbar? Nicely done. You walk out of here with your life, but on the plus side, I think the police are gonna be looking for you soon anyway. He's out of focus. And the, the, the police are gonna be looking for you soon anyway. He keeps asking questions about the same movies. Finish this line from Full Metal Jacket. For instance, there are so many questions about the film Full Metal Jacket. According to Gunnery Sergeant Hartman in Full Metal Jacket, only two things come from Texas. Can we say it online? My dick and my balls. You are quite the enigma shader. <laughs> You are a fascinating specimen that I am giving 10 points to. At his worst, he just gets stuff wrong. Name the Christopher Nolan film that had the line, I can't remember to forget you. I was gonna say The Prestige, but I'm not sure if that's funny or true. <laughs> and it's not a Christopher Nolan film, so uh, to that. Yeah, it is. Uh, Come on, you don't know The Prestige is a Christopher Nolan movie? You're right. Let me try that again. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 hey. Who can act who here? Okay? Okay? Feel sorry for me. I'll go. I'll go. There's a man with a gun right next to you right now. Don't I'm you forget married. That. I got nothing else to live for. Wow. <laughs> Give him the 10 points just based on that, because you know what? If he gets out of here, his wife is going to kill him anyway. Give him 10 I, points. I Give him all 10 points. You can show up by your uh, contestant there a little bit, Doug. You know I like you. Oh, really, Doug? You like me? I like you because I really want to punish you for getting this one wrong. In the movie being John Malkovich, so I'm gonna give you the 10 points for that. Reservoir Dogs? Yes, the Tarantino film that was the satire of a Tarantino film, even before he became Tarantino. What's even the joke, Doug? The joke doesn't make any sense. It's like a Tarantino movie before Tarantino became Tarantino. Because you don't even know what to say. We will see you next time on Pop Quiz Hot Shots. 
Dominic. Go! Get the cod piece inside David Bowie's pants! I vote to skip the opening. Welcome back to Ow My Balls. I can tell why that man has a silver balls to cover up the fact that his balls are probably blue and that's some sort of medicated lotion that he puts. Your butthead? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what? Give it to him. That's just, <laughs> Give it just to him. seeing Hugh Jackman with his sideburns go, you're a butthead. I, I, it's just too funny in it. In two episodes, he has made the same exact joke a hundred times. I would have loved if you said Teen Spirit. No, it's actually, there's something about Mary, but by God, wouldn't that be amazing if he said Ask Goliath in Madagascar? What are some of the core problems with this show? Compared to other trivia shows, the budget seems very limited. The questions aren't good. The rules are really complicated for no reason. There's this whole thing called spazzies. Look out for the spazzy. So this shot of the contestant is completely out of focus. Mr. Smithers. Incorrect. And they had to write in some stupid joke about how they wanted his shot to look bad on purpose. Minion, are you ready? Yes. Chief, are you ready? I was born ready. It looks terrible, and it's distracting from the point of the show, which is just to answer questions. Critic requested no favoritism in these establishing shots. What? 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 Who was the character that said that's a lot of fish in the 1998 Godzilla classic? That's just a joke from a nostalgia critic video. What? That's a lot of fish. Robert De Niro said, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse in what movie? The Godfather? No, it is actually Godfather Part 2. Trick question. Send a video via YouTube stating your name, age, and why you think you would be a good contestant. Hi, my name's Ralph Seppi. I think I would be a great contestant for Pop Quiz Hot Shot. And I'll tell you why. Because I love film. Also, I'll suck Doug's cock. Go! Find Robert Downey Jr.'s career at the bottom of the cocaine. So not funny. So distasteful. So... Pointless. It's just pointless. Is that even a film? Uh, what are you? You know, I'm gonna give you those points because if they ever did make a Monster Squad 2, that would be the title. <laughs> you do a really, really good Chris Rock impression. I mean, I don't mean the Brett. You just gotta catch me on the right day. The impressions on this show are really good. Like I totally can, man. It's really quite easy. What, was that Shaggy or was your voice really breaking there? I remember when Keanu Reeves said that, yes, I'll be taking these huggies, whatever cash you got. Is putting paper bags over their heads a requirement? <sighs> I'm giving you 10 points for that. <laughs> you know what? I want you to answer all the following questions like Chris Rock. Like I said, proud and ashamed to be white right here. This guy starts provoking Doug. Which movie featured the way harsh insult, you're a virgin who can't drive? Your autobiography? From what Spielberg movie is this line from? Stern, if this factory ever produced- Right there, it's obvious what the answer is. Schindler's List. Really? A guy dresses like that? You don't know all these movies, but you know Schindler's List? What kind of a childhood did you have? What are you talking about? None of your business. Don't ask, don't tell. Chris, really, Dorothy? The brains was in there. He has a character. He's a and he just continues to go after him. Brains! He has no brains! Much like you! Right now! Wearing that- Are you hot in that? Okay. It's not funny. Herself in the mirror? Wow. That definitely deserves 10 points right there. $150 this time. All right, all right, it's going up. And then Nostalgia Critic wins. Oh, yes! The prize money is $150 because the contestant from last time lost. His money goes to the next contestant that wins. Then Doug just pockets 50. All of this money and barely any of it went to the contestants. Big Lebowski edition? So this entire episode is just Big Lebowski questions. Yeah, you should be sorry, you will be sorry. I, okay, hey, okay. And they still get most of them wrong. General Anesthetic is just in a t-shirt now and he has a vest on. He's off to like the corner of the frame. Finish this line from when Walter bashes the sports car in. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when- You fuck with strangers. That is not right! What? It's when you had to go even more vulgar when you fuck a stranger in the ass. What kind of question is that? 
get rid of all of the guns and the references to murder and like killing all the contestants. So uh, Walter's gonna get his monkey on. Don't do a little skip out of here. Don't dance. He's already doing like a special episode. It's like the fourth episode of the show. You start doing special episodes like this when you have formula that works and people like, and then you start mixing it up a little bit later on. <laughs> $200, yeah. Walter Sobchak. Daniel Radcliffe. Maud Lebowski. Max Delbrook. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is the episode where they have Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie as one of the contestants. So you have Prince Albert and I can? They don't have the foresight to go, no one is going to like this. Ed? Punk is nothing but death and the crime and the rage of And we're back down to $100. There are 11 episodes total of Pop Quiz Hot Shot. It's actually pathetic how few episodes they made. It's just that a lot of these are the same. They ask the questions, they do the stupid games. It's so repetitive and boring to watch. This is a pretty eventful episode, so we'll skip to this one for now. So now Cinema Snob and another guy are on the show. You used to be the host of a game show. I did. Yeah. Welcome to Purgatory, asshole. Yeah, they don't even want to be bagged. Bag them, this is Pop Quiz Hot Shot. It too, General. I wouldn't either if I was on that show. I'd be like, get that paper bag away from me. You're not putting a paper bag on my head. It's a quiz show. I want $100,000 in court. You put that bag on my head, you motherfucker. Whenever there's a weird answer, he does the same thing. He just gives a look. Enough whiskey turns any Tim Burton movie into a comedy. You've clearly already stolen his kitchen tiles, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm really? Enjoy that got an ooh? He's so pissed that he's getting showed up by his own contestants. Really? You're gonna give that an ooh? An ooh. You, 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 you only get one ooh. Give him the point. In what movie did Christoph Waltz say, I got a bingo? In Glorious Bastards. Yes. Would've been great if he's actually said in bingo as well. You made that joke already. How'd you even find these two together? Were you dating? Were you dating? You're not funny and nobody loves you. Wow! <laughs> Take that, tweeners! <laughs> I'm giving you the points on that one, my friend, because that's that would have been a very different movie, though not that different. We're on episode eight. This is like the hundredth time you've used the very different movie if you would have said that. He had like one line. line. <laughs> <laughs> that caused an explosion! Give him, I'll give him the points for creativity. What? Somehow. There's 50 points between the two of you, and not one of you have actually gotten a right answer yet. Maybe it's because you give away points for no reason. You play 12 different instruments. Can you name them all in 10 seconds? And those hands, hands, piano, French horn, eight, trumpet, seven, clarinet, trombone, six. guitar. The girls in this show are, and always have been, 14 years old. The age of consent in many parts of Japan is in fact Stop it! Stop it! Sex between 13 to 17 year olds can only be done with other 13 to 17 year olds. Why did I still put her in the top 11 hottest anime of women list? I am Sailor Moon, champion of justice, and on behalf of Looks the Lord, damn I good now, doesn't it? Wow. I watched it, but I didn't really listen to it. You only applaud the fact that we all have eyewear on in this episode. That's really weird. That might be the first time. Would you count this guy's helmet as eyewear? How about the first episode of the show where they all had glasses on? Do you remember that? Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Give him 10 points. Bernie Mac. Give him the points. Roping, hand job, blow job, so whatever else you prefer. No! Give him up. 10 points. Silence! I'm Doug Walker. Jerking off in the shower to a 14 year old. No! I viewed it for different reasons. Give him 10 points. Damn! I didn't know! I swear I didn't know! Five, I didn't know! Four, 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 three, four, 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 but Pop Quiz Hot Shot was supposed to be a fresh start. I think they were going for something more professional, and they fell on their face. Discovery Channel documentary! And after these 11 episodes, it just went away. 
Dude, you are not gonna believe this. His house is wiped out. It came from wherever that signal came from. I think he's dead. This is a total waste of time. Okay, we got that out of the way. Channel Awesome, a hub for a bunch of film reviewers. I just, I can't even look at it. The Channel Awesome series of anniversary films. They gathered all of the movie reviewers together from the site. The first one's called kick -Ass -Ya. I saw it when it came out. I saw all of these when they came out, by the way, and I watched the entire thing as they were released. You can tell like he cared a little bit. They're like filming in fields, doing battle scenes that aren't well done. Penis just got to you to try harder. The next Doug Walker production was a little thing called Suburban Nights. They all dressed up in like a bunch of cosplay uniforms and they got in a field and they fought each other. I remember Mati and Mati was a guy from Captain Planet. He was in one of the Nostalgia Critics reviews, which I guess was for Captain Planet. And he's now a reoccurring character in Suburban Nights. He was killed off at the end of the movie. I have been and always shall be your friend. The power is yours. And it was like a really dramatic moment. I remember when I was 13, I was crying. The reason why I'm focusing on To Boldly Flee specifically the most is because I think that's the worst one. It's just a bunch of film references so padded out. These aren't really movies. These are like internet videos that this guy kind of whipped up. I don't understand why this is a big production. It's a guy sitting in front of a wall talking about a movie. Then what really put Nostalgia Critic on the map recently was his review, the Pink Floyd, the wall, Nostalgia Critic. I'm there's no point overthinking any of this. There is a whole lot of controversy surrounding Channel Awesome. I work for Channel Awesome, who also put me in shows like Sibling Rivalry, Bum Reviews. And that's not really the point of this video. We will get into some of it, but there's way too much for me to even cover. And of course our anniversary films. So let's go through the video. Don't grieve Cricket. It is magical. Why is it all blue? I just see a bunch of blue. His was the most. That's a film brain? Okay, film brain? So annoying. Oh my god. He's out of focus. I don't know who that guy is. So I guess he's listening to outer space through his headphones that are connected to that satellite. And he's looking on Google Earth. It has a big dent in it. Then Doug Walker wakes up from his two day acid trip. It's a feeling I'm not used to. Nostalgia Critic is calling Film Brain because he feels sad about Mati dying, he misses him. But what makes Doug want to call Film Brain in this moment? Is that what the opening of the film was? A dream? And it makes Doug wake up and go, man, I miss Mati today. And then he calls Film Brain. And that should have been communicated within the first minute and a half of the film. You're under house arrest. Under what charges? This is the start of a whole subplot in which the nostalgia critic is placed under house arrest for copyright. Later on, they figure out a way to get that ankle bracelet off him. Don't be like ripping off a band-aid with a saw. In the end, he has the choice to leave the house and get a life. But 
but he chooses to stay inside his house. Terrorism, murder, and a complete disrespect for absolutely brilliant filmmaking. These are the crimes by the internet personality Nostalgia Critic. He's sweating profusely the digital zoom-ins the red cup then they reuse footage from suburban nights then they reuse footage from the nostalgia critic review then they reuse footage of kickassian not the unstoppable copyright killers act reviewers like the nostalgia critic won't even be in business anymore here we go with the social commentary about how congress is going to pass some kind of copyright law that's going to make him make less money. People don't see internet critics as a threat. These charlatans are threatening freedom and making it harder to protect our corporate oligarchies. Smurfs too may have to be canceled. Again with the straw man arguments. People think they're watching reviews. So they tune into these bozos who put on scatological rants filled with pop culture references. Doug has created this whole world in his head where there's like some guy in his suit talking shit about film critics and it's just a bunch of guys ranting on the internet. You give these critics too much credit. They're not smart, they're just a pile of pop culture referencing peons. So the bad guys in this movie are like the people who hate film critics. This is just such a love letter. And you can download the- Doug Walker takes center stage in so many moments that are horrible. He is overacting. Don't, you stupid bracelet! He gets on the phone with Spoonie, who is playing a different character. This is going to be something you're gonna to have to get used to. Spoonie, in this case, is playing one of the characters from Battlefield Earth, a notoriously bad movie. You look like Coolio, trick-or-treating as Jack Sparrow. John Travolta didn't play that character bad enough. For these eyes, and he'll know, he'll know that it is I! There's no attention paid to if it's even framed correctly. If you have limited resources, then try to make the thing as short as possible. Limit the amount of time you're telling the story so you can consolidate. I'm not sure if they let his face yellow and then Doug's face blue, or if in post-production they just kind of put a gradient over them. And given their laziness, it was probably done in post. What are you doing here? Have you lost your mind? Do you remember this scene from Star Trek? What the hell are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Help me, Jim. Take me home. Bones, we are. We are home. Help me, critic. Take me home. Spoonie. Spoonie, we are home. I guess all these guys are like Skyping with each other. I am running a scan. Let me see if I can use my satellite to get a lock on it. They all go on their computer and they're trying to track down that signal. The gravitational pull has to be stupendous. Whatever it is, it's gigantic. Okay, tracking complete source point is confirmed as Jupiter. Then Linkara? Linkara. Yes, I'm gonna go get him. I'll go get him. He opens the door and he's like looking that way. Also, you can see the green screen that they left on the computer monitor. By a string of shootings in the Minneapolis area. Yeah, it's fine. It's a video on the internet. No one will consider it a movie. Then Spoonie has a meeting with Rob Walker, who is playing the Emperor from the Star Wars. The hole's reach is strong in him. He must not be allowed to return. Their interaction is so painfully boring that I just keep phasing out. I can eat this while watching any shit. It could be the worst movie of all time. I could I be eating this, I'll be both. See, you're doing this. Just a critic. Betrayal! Here's XCOM, I'm and not, it's gonna- with Then this guy comes in. Why, critic? Why did you leave Marty in that oatmeal can? He's dressed as like a Jedi from Star Wars. This is the good stuff. So you, you get this, uh... He spoke of your friendship. The needs of so he takes some the many. And some brioche bread. Mm. So the sci-fi guy gets his fucking house blown up. And Angry Joe's like, oh my god. Dude, you are not gonna believe this. The dude with the robes comes back and he starts talking about the plot. I sense a disturbance in the plot. The what? The plot. There's just a bunch of plot holes in the movie. He starts listing them off. Where did you get that battle footage? Who filmed it? Why is it so well edited? When did Marty find the time to do this? There's no continuity. Man, this movie's deconstructing its own narrative. It's so complex. So they have a machine that can read minds. My mind did not say that. 
No, it didn't. And it actually goes down a route that's really... Spoonie, were you sexually attracted to your sister? I don't know who to blame. I guess Doug wrote it. Did Rob come up with the concept for that scene? You remind me to ask him if he's a transvestite. <laughs> Ha ha ha, aren't transvestites funny? So this Todd in the Shadows guy, I guess he's supposed to be the ladies man of the group. All the girls are really attracted to him because he's mysterious. I don't know, there's just something about a guy in a mask who's clearly hiding some deep emotional damage. Sexy, you know? Meanwhile, he gets to laugh at them in the background. And so as the head of the FAA, we would like for you to please stop dyeing your head that horrible red so our pilots will no longer be blinded by your hellishly slutty colors. And so long as we're talking about airspace, you might want to put Nostalgia Chick on your maps. Her obviously padded bra is much too large. No one ever gets to insult Doug, because he's the boss. He's a genius. He created the Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but it was a pretty big hit. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but it was a pretty big hit. <laughs> All except for a saxophone-shaped penis. Penis? You're not paying them. It's a fucking anniversary special, and it's supposed to be a comedy. You're making them say all this weird shit. Which ad? His brain, not his penis. Penis. He doesn't care anymore. He's not even thinking about what he's writing. It's literally just regurgitating scenes from movies. There's a ton of scenes from Star Trek. Juario, take us out. Hi, sir. Then we cut back to Spoonie in his bedroom, and it turns out that in the computer they're actually talking to Mati. The video quality keeps changing. None of it looks good, but it goes from a high quality digital camera to like a web camera. Yeah, shut this off, shut this all off. <laughs> Shutting this off would have extremely dangerous consequences. This is just the scene from Ghostbusters. Shut this off, shut these all off. I'm warning you, turning off these machines would be extremely hazardous. <laughs> The Nostalgia Critic calls upon the rest of the film critics from Channel Awesome by tapping his phone. All of these different web personas are teaming up to fight the looming threat of the plot hole. They set it all up to look like the bridge from Star Trek, except it's a basement. Linkara has now been replaced by a Mecha Kara. His voice is much more annoying. This is starting to sound a lot like nonsense, and that's because it is. I don't get why this story had to be so complicated. This could have just been something simple and straightforward and short. You're such a geek. I find that illogical. And that's why you're undateable. Once again, Nostalgia Critic putting down someone else. Throughout the entire scene, you can see the poster of Suburban Nights as well as a blaring light source. Only one light that's shining from behind them and he's still out of focus and the rest of the room is dark. So this guy starts like writing something. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, J.O. The mad scientist girl shows up. She starts talking to him. I just had this oddly specific daydream. Just had to get it all down on paper. Does your half look like my half? Whoa. Zod and John Travolta are hanging out. Zod thinks the place needs a remodeling. The critics got it right. They must make their work their home and their home their work. Transform this place at once. Some of the Dutch angles are clearly a parody of Battlefield Earth, but most of the time I just think they didn't level the tripod. There's also a love triangle. Todd and the Shadows guy is madly in love with Lupa. Meanwhile, Nostalgia Chick is crazy about Todd and the Shadows, but Todd and the Shadows just doesn't feel the same way. I'll tell you what. Get my back and I'll get yours. Wonder if this friendship will experience some obstacles over the course of this film. I mean, over the course of this video. And then, Nostalgia Chick is just walking around. She follows a bunch of wires that lead her to Mechakara. It's just not funny. <laughs> This is the script to the original scene, which from what I read is way worse. No, oh, uh. Do not resist. There is no subtlety to any of the humor. Every joke goes on for too long. Every visual gag is poorly communicated. We cut back to Zod and Spoonie. They are using the same angles of the characters as they talk. The guy in the red collared shirt wants to be captain now. I'm sick of playing second banana to you. They tell him he won't be a good captain because he's a red shirt. This time I'm in charge. Uh, buddy, I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Look at what you're wearing. Yeah, so? Well, it's just, the guys in the red shirts, they tend to be captain, yeah. Another Star Trek reference. 
On to the next scene. These three guys go in a different part of the basement and they shake a box a little bit and Spoonie's supposed to fall out of it. <laughs> That was intense. That was intense, man. To boldly flee is the most ambitious with its visual effects. There is a lot of CGI in this movie. There is a lot of green screen in this movie. Well, you know, it's subjective. So it depends on what you're looking for and how much you're willing to forgive and how much you're willing to accept given the butt. I mean, it's just supposed to be fun. Sorry, you know? Nimue, raise the force wall. Clear the neutron blasters. This guy starts stabbing the red collared shirt guy for about a minute and five seconds. Yeah, I feel the love in this room. Nostalgia critic references Star Trek again, but then he comes back because red shirts always come back. Wait, critic, I have invented these. This is another Doug Walker staple. Instead of putting work into the visual effects, he just keeps using these frames of white it's like he's trying to give me a seizure. They teleport Angry Joe onto the ship to shoot one of their officers. Then they beam Nostalgia Critic down to the basement where they're holding Spoonie. Damn the law! And he's dressed as Judge Dredd. Now you see me, now you don't! Why do these guys stop shooting Doug? I don't know, cause it's funny. <laughs> They beam Nostalgia Critic to a field so he can have a change of scenery. Zod also beamed a ton of soldiers there. And by a ton, I mean three guys. You know, um... He's been fighting those guys for like eight minutes now. But Zod beams Cinema Snob out of the ship. Then he drives away. Do you remember this scene from Star Wars? Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. And I can learn this technique? Not from a critic. Do you remember this scene? Only I can make you a true producer. I have the power to save the one you love. Do you remember this scene from Ghostbusters? According to this morning sample, it would be a Twinkie. 35 feet long, weighing approximately 600 pounds. That's a big Twinkie. Enough that it would make that wiener of yours uh, twice the size of Chicago and three times the height of Mount Everest. Wow, you are hung! Man, I am sick of this shit. We cut to the Jedi guy in a poorly rendered knockoff X-Wing. Oh, you're just bitter because I wouldn't buy you that iPad you were flirting with. Because she was a whore! They hook up a machine to film brain that does something. We go into Spoonie's super ego and we're treated to this. Now this film is funny at times, unintentionally. Then there are the scenes like this that are just really uncomfortable. If you fight back, I'll go out on a date with you. He's possessed and becomes Robocop. It's time to bring this love triangle to an end. He takes off his helmet and shows Nostalgia Chick his face and Nostalgia Chick freaks out and her scream blows up Linkara. You saved my life. I think that's worth one date. While Cinema Snob is becoming Darth Vader, this guy is becoming Luke Skywalker. He's learning the magic of film so he can have the power to defeat Darth Snob. You're probably wondering why it's appearing in your thoughts. I am here to teach you about the plot. It's just the scene from Return of the Jedi, except it's Rob Walker sitting there, so that's the funny part. We'll edit it out and add it to the special edition. Something is out there, film brain. Something is calling me. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's something. Maybe it's something where I can be useful. Maybe it's something where I can make a difference. Maybe it's something where I can actually do something meaningful and not just hurt people. Whatever it is, it has the answers I'm looking for. It has the truth. Then they sing this song about how they're a distraction, and I gotta admit, this is the best part of the movie. Instead of making this three and a half hour long monstrosity, they could have focused their energy on making this like a cool little music video. Nostalgia Critic drives his car into the plot hole, and there he finds Doug Walker, the writer. 
I, I, I'm the writer. Oh. You were a character that I created for an online media show. From meeting and talking to himself, he uncovers the truth that he is the most important person in the universe. And that makes it so Nostalgia Critic doesn't have to do Nostalgia Critic reviews anymore. Shout it as loud as you can! Trust me, it's the only way! And then the following day, he announced he's done making Nostalgia Critic videos. I know you're in there and I know you can hear me. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. All right, I'm sorry for everything I did. So much of this movie is focused on showing how Nostalgia Critic has transcended to this next level where he's gone beyond the story. And then Doug goes on about how the Nostalgia Critic has grown as a character over these past years, how far he's come. You're something else. Evolved. You've literally leapt off the page and taken on a life of your own. It became less of me writing you what to do and you telling me what to write. It's just rambling garbage. It's out that door. Reality. People enjoyed his reactions, they found them genuine and entertaining. These jokes and how they're presented are so contrived and predictable. Dr. Insano, we thought we'd never see you again. Some of us hoped we never see you again. This is one of those scenes where it looks like no one knows what the hell is going on. It feels like Doug just fed them lines to read on the spot. But, but I don't understand. It doesn't matter what equipment you have. Do you have something to say? And this guy used to have something to say. And that's why people really connected with him. And thus, everything he is or ever was is lost. He put his very life savings into it. His life, his all. By all accounts, it's a complete and total abject failure. And yet by making something so awful, so wretched, he created something that lives on. Fame is fleeting, but infamy lasts forever. Is there any reason you should care about to boldly flee? It's hard to watch and technically incompetent. There's no reason for its absurd runtime. There's no reason to care about any of these characters. There are too many villains to give them any development. All of the character arcs are predictable. They're either taken from other movies or they're cliche. Nothing about what he's doing is actually funny. It just seems more like he's imitating what he likes rather than criticizing it or spoofing it. Suburban Nights was looking to be a parody of the fantasy genre, whereas To Boldly Flee is a parody of sci-fi, specifically Star Wars and Star Trek, with references to a few other things as well. Let's just reference a bunch of movies like them. What is this, Cloverfield? He just takes scenes from films he likes and calls it comedy because they're doing silly characters. It's the same problem Seth MacFarlane has with his material. Tell a new story. Write jokes that stand on their own. Parody adds another layer onto the onion. It's not the whole onion. Does that make sense? No? Alright, well, now that Channel Awesome has a ton of controversy behind it, it's kind of become okay to make fun of them and their content. This is not a low-budget indie film that people really cared about. The worst part is, the content they are producing isn't good. I am the Nostalgia Critic. There was no reason to stop the Nostalgia Critic. You know why? Because if you wanted to make some crazy trivia show, then he could have made those things and done Nostalgia Critic at the same time. <laughs> he could have made money, had a good income stream, and then done things he wants to do on the side. But instead, he decides to cancel everything so he can kickstart some kind of trivia show for almost $100,000 and then make 11 episodes before it just tanks. This is to boldly flee. Oh, you thought it was over? After announcing he was done with the Nostalgia Critic, he released a Nostalgia Critic on To Boldly Flee. Doug goes through the entire movie he made himself, explaining the plot better than the film does. And he throws in a couple jabs, but you know, he's not too self-critical. He doesn't break down the fundamental problems, which is that it's unwatchable and it's not funny. I am Ross Al Ghul and I'm here to say no inflection in your voice is A-OK. -okay. Another project he worked on after Nostalgia Critic was something called Demo Reel, which was a comedy skit show. This ended only after a few episodes as well. Then, in September, Channel Awesome, 
uploaded Nostalgia Critic Season 6 Episode 1. The review must go on. Demo Reel Finale. Do you want to do this again? Do you have that same passion you had before? Do you honestly want me to come back? Basically in this episode, Nostalgia Critic comes back. This is the movie that brought you back. That made me realize I could actually do this again. Why is he doing this? I want to review whatever I want, whenever I want. I want to review whatever I want, whenever I want. You were just in the surgery, but you made it out all right. Back to normal in a couple of weeks. Happy to patch you all up. Let the nurses know if you need anything. Doc, wait. Can you put on the show demo reel? Who is that? High page commissioner Gordon. Friday night, maybe we hang out. Wait, go back. That was it. That was it right there. We finally arrived at demo reel. There's only so many ways I can say this thing is bad. Let's not go through every episode, even though a lot of them look like winners. Come on, Wreck-It Ralph vs. Angry Birds, Lost in Translation, Bromance version, The Blair Witch Hangover? It's too good. Let's hone in on the first episode of Demo Reel, which is a parody of The Dark Knight. I am Donnie Dupre, the founder and director of Demo Reel. They're introducing a lot of stuff, a lot of different characters. It starts with a ghost skit, where just a bunch of ghosts from movies show up. Jesus, it's Beetlejuice. I'm the ghost of the most, baby. <laughs> there is no joke in the scene, aside from referencing movies. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. They spent a ton of money on this as well, yet it's that same low production value we've become accustomed to. Making a comedy skit show that's funny is so difficult. It requires enormous talent, lots of time, and some kind of technical skill to pull it off. Okay. Once again, Doug Walker is the greatest man to ever live. For I am. Bad Jesus. Do you remember this scene from The Dark Knight Rises? Hello, miss me. Do you remember this scene? I don't like any of the supporting cast, but the worst has to be Rob, who plays the cameraman. Guten Tag, my name is Karl Copenhagen. Ich bin ein Kameraman. Und das hier ist meine Kamera. Kami. This first episode is two parts, each one clocking in over 20 minutes. Where are they? One of the most infamous skits is something called the Super Villain Shuffle, which we're gonna watch right now. We're not doing the Super Villain Shuffle! I am Dr. Crane, totally insane, and I only have a few lines in the movie, so next. Now, this is a story all about how my frown got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute, don't go too far, I'm gonna tell you a little story about how I got these cars. My daddy was a drinker, my wife, she liked to gamble. My dog's a plastic surgeon, please stop me if I rant. My plans are so detailed, it's like it's word. I'm working on a video about great TV shows, which will be super long, and I want to dedicate my focus to that now. Um, but I, I figured I'd throw in something stupid like this. <laughs> In one movie, 
movie did Will Smith say, you know, you drive almost slow enough to drive Miss Daisy? The Wild Wild West. <laughs> you know, that movie is so stupid, but even that movie wouldn't be stupid enough to make a reference to driving Miss Daisy. The story I'm about to tell you is true. 100% true. This is like me when I was 13 years old. So I have the email as proof. <laughs> this is the comment he wrote to me. A long time ago in a video that he has now deleted, by the way, he reviewed Kick-Ass 2. The basis I recommend this movie, Ralph the Asshole, is that I love Kick-Ass. I own the DVD and the graphic novels, you conspiracy nut twat. Don't you dare make any videos supporting anything you like, Ralph. It would be embarrassing. Oh wait, it's too much for you to handle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. So that's my only interaction with Angry Joe.